So I decided to ditch Plex Media Server and use Jellyfin. In this video, I will tell you why I decided to switch over to Jellyfin. And I will also show you one of the best ways to install Jellyfin on a Raspberry Pi. First, let me start by saying that I have been a longtime user of Plex and it has served me well for so many years. However, I have recently came across some issues with the platform that made me consider looking for an alternative. My biggest issue with Plex is all the changes and the new features that no longer suit my needs. I don't need another TV app. I don't need live TV or to listen to music from different streaming services. All I need is to be able to stream my own media, family videos, photos, and so forth, which Jellyfin does, and it does very well. On top of all that, Plex keep crashing on all my Roku devices. I understand this is not specifically a Plex issue, but this is the straw that broke the camel's back. Perhaps one of the main benefits of Jellyfin is that it is completely open source and free to use. I have been using Jellyfin for a little over a month now, and I have to say that I have zero crashes and I get exactly what I need. You can install Jellyfin on a Linux box, a Windows PC, a Mac, or in a Docker container. In this video, you will see how I'm running Jellyfin on a Docker container using Portainer. I just hope I didn't lose some people already when I mentioned Docker. If you think this is going to be complicated, I promise it's not. Just hang in here for a few minutes and you will learn three things today. You will learn how to install Docker, Portainer, and Jellyfin all in one shot. I have a link to all the commands in the video description so you can simply copy and paste. To get started, open Terminal and make sure your system is up to date. Next, we want to go ahead and install Docker. Then we need to add Docker to our user group. In my case, the user is Jelly. Keep in mind this will be different for you. You can find your username in the root directory. After that, you will need to reboot. Now we need to go ahead and do another update and upgrade. And reboot. The next thing we need to do is download and install Portainer. Now we need to know the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, so I am going to type in this command. This is my IP address, so I'm going to need to copy this and paste it in a web browser followed by port 9000 to access Portainer. You will be asked to create a username and password, so go ahead and do that. Click on Get Started, Local, Container. This is where we're going to create a Jellyfin container. So we can go ahead and name it Jellyfin and pull Jellyfin image from Linux server forward slash Jellyfin. Next, we need to configure the network ports. We will need port 8096, which is the port that we will need to access Jellyfin from a web browser. The next port is going to be 7359. Make sure UDP is checked, port 1900 for universal plug and play, and check UDP as well. Under volumes, you can map as many additional volumes as you need for your media. I am creating three. The first container must say forward slash config. The host will be home. The username for your pie. This will be different for you. I named mine jelly, and then followed by docker, jellyfin, and config. The next container for your media will be whatever you want to stream. In my case, it is videos. So I named it videos. In host, you should put the path to the folder of the media that you want to access. As you can see, I simply copied the path to my video folders and pasted it in here. Now proceed and do the same for anything else that you want to add. Next, we're going to need to set up environment. I am adding three as I am doing here. Once that is done, we need to make sure that the container starts automatically after reboot. The last thing we need to do here is click to deploy the container. 
We just need to wait for the container to be created and start. So we need the IP address again for the Raspberry Pi, this time followed by 8096. The last thing we need to do is assign a static IP address to the Raspberry Pi. To assign a static IP address, open terminal and type in the following command. Scroll all the way to the bottom and make the changes as I am showing you here. Just make sure you enter your own IP address, your own gateway IP, and your own DNS, not mine. If you complete all these steps correctly, you can now access your media from any device in your home network. If you have any questions or comments regarding this installation, don't hesitate to reach out or leave me a comment. And as always, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for my next project.